joining me right now from the beautiful city of Bangkok, Thailand, FMD boss man, John Nutt. What's going on, John? Living the dream. Living the dream. Our usual. Yeah, looks, man. Good, it, good to hang out with you. Good to hang out with you. Of That's course, man. Here, right? Of course. Yeah, anytime. Absolutely. Yes. Well, you got a big event coming up in a few weeks. But before yes. we get into all that, let's talk about uh, UFC 229. You were there live okay. in Las Vegas. Yeah, man. Tell me I about it. I was there it. live. Uh, okay, again, I guess the first thing that I would have to say is, uh, I mean, have you been to many UFCs? John. I've only been to one. You've only been to one. Okay, so in my personal opinion, like I used to go to a lot of them um, pre-2004. I was going to a lot of them because I was living in Los Angeles. So I was going to see them in L.A., but I also lived close enough to, to Vegas that I was going to see them when it was like pre-the television show. Um, Chuck Liddell was obviously there, but it was pre-Forrest Griffin style. You know what I mean? Um, there have been different eras to UFCs. For everybody, if you just watch, but the events as well, like, and you know how I am an events coordinator, like, that's how I roll. I'm a producer of those types of things. So for me, there's been like the different periods of the UFC. And uh, again, we are in the Conor McGregor period right now. So like right now, you can go to a UFC. Like I, I went to the Shanghai one here, you know what I mean? Um, but there's a difference between uh, UFCs and Conor McGregor UFCs right now. There's a huge difference. Between regular UFCs, and, and that's in terms of the numbers of, yeah, sure, pay-per-views and stuff like that, but just staying away from it, staying on what I enjoy about it is, like, the events. It's like going to a football game, a cricket match, an F1, uh, WWE, a concert, whatever. I like events coordinating, and uh, going to a Conor McGregor UFC is a different sort of UFC. I mean, the amount of Irish that go to it, the, you know, the purchasing power of their uh, plane ticket buying and moving villages... I mean, the whole of Galway is there to support that man. So uh, that's first and foremost what I would say about 229. 229 was great, man. I mean, I got to uh, – I, I feel very fortunate that I got to be where I was. I was I was covering it, doing an Eat, Pray, Fight episode for Fox Sports Asia. So, um, you know, I had clearance, the Jason Bourne clearance, where I, I could go anywhere and do anything. And uh, that was awesome. Um, so we really got it done. Um yeah, terrific show. I mean, uh, you know, and I, and I had the whole whole experience. I I, I got to witness uh, Derek Lewis with that huge knockout at the end, and then I got to actually be with Derek Lewis at Hakkasan like later that night. So like I was living the dream. Um, it, it was fantastic. Um, and yeah, I got to be there for the melee, which technically so many martial artists frown upon, and they hate it for uh, it's just a black eye on our sport. Ah, it's it's tarnishing. It was an amazing time. I, I loved it. When the riot police came in at the end, and the banging shields and stuff, I was right there and felt, for, for, felt fortunate to be there. So, yeah, it was awesome, bro. Yeah, going back to that, uh, the martial artists were disappointed in that moment. I think they failed to realize that the UFC is not in the business of, basically, it's not really in the business of promoting martial arts. It's in the, promote, it's in the business of promoting fights. Yeah. And I think and, people uh, don't I mean, realize I think, that. Yeah, of course. And if you go back to the original days, I mean, the Art Davey days when he, he started it, it was. It was to find out who had the baddest discipline and then who is, in effect, the baddest man. Uh, back then, they didn't do weight classes. They evolved because they had to get sponsorship deals. They evolved because they had to get TV deals. And it has become the sport that we know it today. And yes, technically, it is a sport. Um, and different promotions handle that differently. You know what I mean? Because that's events coordinating and that's marketing. You know what I mean? So not not all of them are going to be the same. Not all of them are going to have the same business model. Never, not all of them are going to have the same quality show, technical show, care about, I mean, I mean, whatever, from the fighters to the horse and pony show. All of it, you know? It's grand. I love it. You know? <laughs> You're right, <laughs> the whole, man. Uh, the, the whole of it. Well, you know, the melee happened. It's basically what they're saying is, is country versus country, but really it's yeah. not. Now, um afterwards you're yeah, out in vegas was, was awesome yeah. afterwards you're out there. in vegas people are partying did you yes. see any interesting altercations happen well again just po just post the uh post the show when you walked out there were skirmishes everywhere like you know people were all like head on a swivel gotta have your head on a swivel because 
Like there's like a little melee over here, like uh, you know, five against two. There's a little melee over here, and uh, and th and they, they were they were popping off every little way. It was, I mean, again, this was something where like I sat back, folded arm, like <laughs> this is amazing. I can't believe I'm in Las Vegas. I was just on the other side of the planet. Wow, you know. Um, but it was, you know, it was a dude. It was a great time. Um, and, and yeah, that doesn't make it seem, you know, that make it, makes it seem like it's Beirut, but it wasn't. You know, it was. Uh, it was good. Whatever. It was fun. I, I was very entertained. And yeah, I didn't see anything like really, really bad crack off. You know, when you're in Vegas and things crack off, that's just because you're in Vegas. I mean, people there are there because they're on holiday. I, I mean, literally, what is it like? Ninety nine percent of the city is there to work for the casinos, and you know. 99% of the people that visit there are there to party. So it's a great town. Have you ever been? No, I never visit Las Vegas. I mean, well, you got to obviously put it on your bucket list. But, I mean, it's to go there for the fights is one thing. To go there for a concert is a different thing. But Vegas as a whole is just like, uh, I mean, the only thing that I can compare it to here on this side of the globe is like Patea. Or Macau, I guess. But Macau is not the same, like. Like, Asians don't gamble the same way as Farangatang do. We, we, they don't. Like, uh, in Macau, you got no free drinks when you're gambling at most casinos. When you're sitting down playing blackjack, you got no free drinks. And that's, like, one of the reasons I go and drink or, and, and gamble in Vegas is because you sit and do both. Yin and yang. Connection. Connection. Synergy. So, uh, yeah. I mean, eh, is what it is. Um yeah, Vegas is a great time. And it was an amazing show. I was really happy to be there. Yeah, um, I guess Vegas is just like a powder keg. You got people vacationing, partying, drinking, gambling. You got dudes that lost their whole life just five sure. seconds before they met you. You don't know what kind of mental state they're in. You oh, know, anything could wild. happen. Oh, again, yeah, it was completely wild. And uh, we were, you know, yeah. <laughs> you add on to that, again, like, this was the first time where I ever noticed this, but it was the first time where uh, medicinal marijuana and recreational marijuana are like now legal. When we were walking down some of these streets and outside the stadium, you like walked into a cloud. It was amazing. <laughs> like <laughs> it was really weird. Like you could, just everywhere you went, there were people that were just roasted. You could tell very obviously. So except for the people that I were with were, were like, I've never even smelled it before. This is amazing. What is that? Lavender? It's amazing <laughs> smell. Yeah. So I mean, there was, there was a lot of people there having having a good time, I, that's but that's great. the thing, man. Like again, like I do go to I go to I've been to a lot of other shows, especially in the last year, and um, like they don't have the turnout capacity that like McG when McGregor comes, you see a whole different like again it's orange and green and white like the whole place. I mean, it's wild. I mean, that guy is again he's like the Korean boy band of MMA. Um, whether you love him or hate him, you follow him. Like people, people that go online and bash him are the biggest supporters of him, even if they don't think that they are. They're the ones causing the most most draw, causing the most noise. And I I always find that amusing because that's like marketing and branding 101. And like we should know that just as people being on Facebook and Skype and all the rest of it. Um, anybody that goes out there and is like, shame on Connor. Shame on Connor is actually being like, I vote for Connor. Yeah. Give him, give him points. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's the man. So, uh, cause that's how that, 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 that stuff works. That's how that stuff works. Um, but yeah, I thought it was great. I thought the whole melee, I mean, again, like I didn't throw any punches. I didn't jump in, you know, did they take it too far? Yes. Whatever. It was entertainment. It's good. Yeah. You know, a lot of idiots out there too. <laughs> A lot of idiots. A lot of idiots. A lot of, you know, ignorance is bliss. A lot of people choose it. A lot of people choose it. So, yeah. So, what are the, again, that was, a, that was a good show. And, again, I, that was like, dude, that was like the middle of my month last month. I mean, I, I in one month I did seven shows. I did seven events. And I was on that side of the globe and this side of the globe. So, uh, there was a lot. And, again, different events, different strokes for different folks. Different marketing tools for different places. I know Conor McGregor wouldn't be, uh, <laughs> although he might bring in the numbers over here. I wonder about it. I wonder about his bringing up the numbers. Um, I wonder how his numbers would do in China. Is all I'm saying. Speaking of the UFC, 
some news yeah, came out earlier this week. Big signing by one championship. Okay. Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez ditches. Yep. The North America comes over yeah, to yeah, yeah. our side of the globe, joins yep. one championship. Their um, bubble, the our bubble. Yeah. Their bubble, the our bubble. Exactly. Yeah. Um, given yeah. exposure, I believe it's huge exposure. Yep. For one championship on that side, on the other side of the world, because yes. now the big, big media, yes. so called, is going to start covering one championship more because of Eddie Alvarez, and that's Probably. great for them. And hopefully, yeah, that is great for them. Yes, great for them. Uh, dude, I think it's good for everybody in the industry, to tell you the truth. Um, I'm not opposed to it uh, at all, at all. Like, again, like whenever one championship does a big move, when it comes to fighters, I, I very much enjoy it. I'm a, I'm a fight fan, and I'm actually more on, on that side, I think, and the media side than I am a promoter, even though I have my own promotion. Uh, I have my own promotion because I'm trying to get people fights as well. Uh, too many fighters, not enough fights. Um, but that being said, yeah, I mean, again, like, uh, shines a lot of light on, on one championship for having them. It'll be, again, and again, a lot of, man, it's tough. It's tough to, a lot of people want to discuss the, them with Eddie coming over. What's the depth? What's the depth of their division? And who is he going to fight? Because, again, like, everybody keeps on bringing up Ben Askren. Technically, they were a different, they were a different weight class. I mean, you, you can make these super fights, and one championship is clearly okay to make those super fights. Let's not throw that by them. But um, those guys are a different weight class. Shinya Aoki, again, he has fought him twice, lost once via heel hook, but then the last time that he fought him was, I mean, like literally almost 10 years ago. And, uh, yeah, mashed him then. I think that they've grown differently as athletes, the two of them. So if you want to... Uh, look at that. I mean, again, if if one championship is moving into Japan, that's obviously the way to go and, and make that that three count. But I see it at that being just a Eddie Alvarez stomping. Um, I don't know about you. Again, um, it'll be interesting, man. You know, I like what he says about going after the three belts, um, and that's that's cool. That's cool. I know I know guys in Thailand though that are like fifteen time champions. You know what I mean? Um, 17-time champions. Do you know what I mean? 20-time. The champion is a champion is a champion. It's not really about the championship because the championship is a reward. You know what I mean? It's, it is a medal. It is a, it is a trophy. Um, it's what that means at the time. You know what I mean? you got WBC champions who I consider the green belt like one of the best rewards in prize fighting. Some eras were different than others. You know what I mean? If, if you were the WBC champion in England – in like the late 1970s, you were probably a bad dude. But if you were, you know, heavyweight champion when Mike Tyson was, maybe there wasn't a lot of competition out there. Who knows? You feel me on that, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. it's again different strokes for different folks and the way that you see things. So if Eddie truly believes that he's going to be challenged out here, I mean, bro, like again, if it was if it was a great move for Eddie business wise, it was a great move for Eddie business wise. Let's call it, you know how it probably was. Uh, kudos to him. Kudos to him. A lot of people were uh, asking me, like, why would Eddie choose one championship? Because I'm guaranteeing you the UFC and Bellator probably offered him six figures. You know, I think that's what he was making before sure. he, you know, he fought out his contract. Possibly. So people ask me, I'm like, Hey, you don't know what kind of deal one championship is giving Eddie. Right. You, you don't know the, the the opportunities that one championship can you know provide him, like Correct. sponsorship. Uh, he could also you people are not even talking about. It. He could also fight in the uh, super series, mm -hmm. straight striking, Muay Thai gloves, kickboxing. You don't know if what he's thinking. He want, if that's the way he wanted to switch up his career right now, that too would be amazing. Like you're speaking right up my angle with that. He all of a sudden was like. You know what? I'm gonna go do Letway instead, or some other thing. Yeah, it'd be like amazing. Let's do that. But I don't think that that's actually the case of what's gonna happen. Do you? No, but I'm. It's still up in the air. You never know what angle that he's gonna go with. Of course, he's gonna fight MMA. That well, you know. Obviously, obviously, lucrative wise, we have to assume that it was good for him. And or if it wasn't lucrative wise, that it was very good for him. They gave him a total package 
of a lot of different a lot of different uh, fishes to eat, if you will. You Bells know what I mean? Whistles. A lot of things to do. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, listen, the, you, you know who one of my p- favorite prize fighters is? Is Borkow. Obviously, I represent the guy. I worked for him before. I worked with him numerous times. A lot of people are like, why doesn't he go to glory? Why does he have to go to glory? My man's got his own fish sauce. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if, if they're going to pay you $300,000, okay, to fight, like, again, a, you know, a really the, the, one of the hardest opponents in glory, and or they were going to give you $200,000, just $100,000 less, to fight a, uh, uh, an eighth grader that has one arm, which, which one are you going to take? You're going to take the 200. I'll be, I'll be kicking the head off <laughs> eighth graders with one arm. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just line them up, line them up, you know? And now, again, like, all promotions are going to promote their fighters as having depth and, and having, um, you know, competition. Um, I regularly, by the way, last year, when we were promoting the Medi Bagari javier Trujillo fight, I was like, Javier Trujillo is my Eddie Alvarez. I was comparing them. I, I even broke it off on Fox Sports Asia once. Like, um, And by the way, on this card, Javier versus uh, uh, Mark Kerr, Daniel Dude, that's Kerr. My, uh, my, my bad. Daniel Kerr, you know, you know where my head's been. Yes. Daniel Kerr versus uh, Javier Trujillo is like my Israel Adesanya versus uh, Derek Brunson. For sure, man. Like this card. Very similarly, if you if you look at what I if you listen to what I just said, and you are a huge fan and a hardcore fan of combat sports, you'll look at my fight to their fight and be like, oh, I see what he did there. I see what he did there. I I have my Kiwi. They have their Kiwi. But the Kiwis aside, it's the striking. The striking of Daniel Kerr is like the striking of Israel Adesanya. And the grappling and, and smash of Derek Brunson is that of Javier Trujillo. So, again, remember that I am a matchmaker and I am a huge fight fan. And I do believe in credibility and in matchmaking makes it virtually identical <laughs> is what makes it the best. So, uh, yeah, again... Let's Where jump. Yeah, let's jump into it. Let's jump into the the fight card that you got coming up. Full Metal Dojo, sixteen. Yeah, Big Trouble yeah. in Little Bangkok. Little Bangkok. Yeah. Always love the eighties references. If you mm-hmm. if you hate eighties references, then I don't think you should ever be alive. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You should just go, you know go, go live in Antarctica here. or something. Yeah, yeah. We don't need you around here. You're a negative <laughs> human being. All right, uh, November. It's happening November third. In Bangkok, Insanity Night, Insanity Night Club. Yes, it's yep. a Halloween show. Let's jump right into it. You just mentioned Javier Trujillo versus Daniel Kerr. Um, yeah. You, what do you think about this matchup? You know, you just mentioned that it's like the Israel Adesanya versus the Derek Brunson type matchup. It is. Um, Anybody who's in the uh, Bangkok fight community really knows Daniel Kerr because he is a guy that fights. Anyone, anywhere, any, anyhow, if you will. He's fought on all the major Muay Thai shows in the kingdom. He was on Thai Fight. I mean, dude, he fought Letway. He, he is a, a pretty hard... He, dude, he fought John Wayne Parr in a cage with four-ounce gloves. Like, he did that. So, um, yeah, and yeah, he might have a loss to John Wayne Parr, but I'll accept that loss any day. You know what I mean? Oh, I lost to Al- Alistair Overeem? Yeah, I would love to lose to Alistair Overeem. You know, you know what I mean? Like... It's one of those things where he's in the industry and everybody knows him. He's a really good dude. Uh, I know him from back in the Dare Fight Sports Day. He took his first MMA fight with me. Now, he's had like two since then. I don't think that they've both been successful, but it doesn't really matter. The dude is hardcore. Javier, you know, I feel like we were kind of almost grooming Javier. We wanted Javier to, to, to make a run at it, um, whether that was one championship, Bellator, UFC, KSW, any, any of the majors, you know what I mean? Um, and I think a lot of the boys in Australia should really look at Javier. Like Hex and uh, Eternal, love me to get Cam O'Neill to get uh, Javier on one of his cards. I think there's a lot of matchups that, that are good for him out there. He lost to Medi Bagari. You know, we basically were going to have, uh, I mean, the winner was fighting for a middleweight championship. So I, I back then, if you had asked me, I would have thought it was going to be Javier. Medi Bagari is... Tough as nails, as you saw, even get, got a shot in the crotch that broke a cup. I've never seen that in any organization ever. 
went and took two pieces of the cup out out his crotch yeah. from a man that likes procreation. You know, you got to have some kids. You got to you got to stay on. He got hit in the crotch that hard and took the took the two pieces of the cup out, put a new cup in, went back in and bashed it out. Mm. The now, crazy part of that story is that the cup that he put in was someone else's cup that they used earlier in that night, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 it was a teammate. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Teammates pass him around, though. That ain't, that ain't, you know, it's not sacred. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, and again, yeah, he, uh, dude, he's a hardcore dude. Uh, uh, Medi Bagari's a bad dude. So for him to step up, actually, and take on Glenn Sparv, you know, we got guys that have lower records against a guy like Glenn who because he's so experienced. But, again, Glenn is on his own path of being a prize fighter and a journeyman as well. Uh, he's been in the game a long time. Mm. I know that he's had some offers from some larger companies that he hasn't accepted because he's fighting on his own terms and things of that nature. Um, he also is a guy that wants volume of fights, not uh, not necessarily. I mean, I'm sure he wants to go to the UFC. You know what I mean? And if we could help him get to the UFC, I'd love to help him get to the UFC. But uh, you know, that dude is going to fight anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. And, you know, you you know him as well. Yeah. He's a true fighter. Mullet. He's the baddest mullet in the game. Yeah. He's the prettiest mullet in the game. A lot of people go Roy Nelson, and I'm like, no, Glenn Spar. If that it, it, he needs Pantene Pro V sponsorship, get that man a Head and Shoulders sponsorship right now. Vidal Sassoon. Vidal Sassoon. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get him on it. Yeah, so, this, Glenn is. Uh, he's coming off uh, a tough loss. Actually, two two fights ago, because I think yeah, he took a fight. Taiwan. He took a fight in China, right? He won that fight. Did he Taiwan, win by yeah. submission? Dude, he got beat up in uh, Taiwan. He yeah. Got, his face got lumped up. I yeah. mean, he had the, the whole orbital swollen and, and looked like Rockmon and stuff. And that was uh, Jeff Machine, his uh, his promotion up there in Taiwan. Uh, big shout out to him and all the other people trying to put on shows. Um, and yeah, he got thumped up. The rumor was, again, that he was going to uh, get like that big win. And then one more, and he was going to go on the Tuesday night challenger show, something like that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, or at least, you know, people are looking at Glenn. People are looking at Glenn. Yeah, a Major lot of people, people are looking at Glenn. A yeah. lot of people are looking at Glenn. I mean, he is the number one fin- uh, Finnish middleweight. He's the number one, like, on Tapology, I think, in Southeast Asia. So I give credit to Tapology. He's the number one. You know, <laughs> they don't rank those three majors, but. You and I both know, again, like, Glenn is one of the funnest guys for me in this organization. Not, not only was he my first headliner for uh, for Full Metal Dojo on our first show, but he was also, we were talking to him back with Dare. And, I mean, back then we had, you know, Sebastian Kadistan, and they had that fight in PXC. And But it's interesting to see, since Sebastian had that knockout, like, how they both have grown. Mm. And Glenn picked himself up and went out and fought, like, nine more times. Sebastian is where Sebastian is, and, like, he's doing great. I wish he was promoted a little bit heavier. I think a lot of people do. Um, And a little bit more hardcore, because the dude's a hardcore dude. Um, Maybe he's a little too raw for for something, for some people. You know what I mean? But uh, I love him. Mm. He is where he's at. I I, I would see Glenn and him having kind of similar careers because you could you can follow them and see where they went from that fight which is a good time yeah it's crazy to think that glenn used to cut down mm-hmm. to welterweight and Huge when you man. see him standing next to the likes of tai tuavasa who fights in the heavyweight division in the ufc Correct. and they're about the same size yeah man mm-hmm. so you know i think earlier in his career that had a big effect on his performance, and now he's kind of found himself at this weight division, at middleweight, and For sure. performing very well all over the world. Like you said, he will fight anywhere. He doesn't oh, care. Yeah. He doesn't even take a corner, man. He'll go alone. No, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, com- completely. He's a boss, he man. Like he, he's, what I, he's what I consider like an experienced fighter. You know, they're just like different promotions. There are different fighters, and, and when you get a little bit older and you're you're up in the game, you realize that like all the young bucks want championships. All the young bucks want championships. A lot of the older dudes, 
They just want to smash. You know, it takes a certain someone in this life that like, you know, you know, I work in the BJJ communities and they're always like, why isn't it growing as fast as CrossFit or why isn't it growing as fast as this? And it's like, dude, 90% of men don't like to roll around with another man. Mm-hmm. Like that's the, just the facts it has nothing to do with whatever. 95% of men do not like getting punched in the face <laughs> on the regular. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Glenn is part of that 1% of the world that really enjoys not only punching people in the face, but he does not mind taking a shot. I'm the same way as a fighter. Like I always wanted to take a couple licks before really trying to throw down. Uh, when I fought Muay Thai, I was all about like, come on, come on, you know, uh, probably the dumbest thing in the world to do, but whatever. The, the forehead is a very, very tough, tough part of the body. Definitely. You can receive a lot off the dome. Now, you got Glenn, and then on the other side, uh, Medi, Bag, yep. Bag Harry. Um, yeah. Medi, always ready Bagavi. He's a tough wrestler. Both these yep. guys got wrestling in their pocket. Um, he mm-hmm. showed that he could take a beating and come back and win in that Javier Agreed. fight. Javier was whooping that ass in the first round, I believe. Yep. And then he came back and, then- and won the fight. And his other submissions from Golden Warrior are legit, too. So, I mean, like, he's a well-rounded dude. He's kind of the future. If he gets an L against Glenn, it's not even, like, a bad L. I think a lot of people think he's going to take the loss. You know what I mean? Um, if he takes a loss, it's not a, it's not that bad. If he has a win, um, look for Medi Bagari to go to Risen right away, probably. You know what I mean? He's got to think about he's from, he's from Iran which porks him as a fighter. Mm. Absolutely. Visa issues are, are hellish. That's why you don't see a lot of Iranians in the UFC, if there's any. I don't think there is any. Um, but it's because of their passports, bro. You know, um, Iran has a lot of bad boys. I've obviously very much helped with Ali Akbari's career, and uh, I'm very proud of where he is. He's fighting for ACB's heavyweight championship. ACB, you and I both know, like, Okay, there's different promotions that are considered the biggest, and then there's different fight or like fight classes that are considered the baddest. The ACB heavyweight uh, title is probably up there, almost with the UFC heavyweight title. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And for right now, because their because their division isn't as deep as it has been in certain years and, and, and certain people. I also would love it if he randomly went back and fought like Josh Barnett. How awesome would that be? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um... There is so much talent that people don't know about mm-hmm. because of the political situation that they're in. But, well, you know, fighter. that's our job, though. Our job is it's to completely, yeah, notify everybody of who is... Everybody's just not about the UFC. You got guys coming up all over the world that are really? that could beat all, a lot of the guys in the UFC. They're just not there yet. So, you know, it For is sure. what it is. For sure. And, and, and yeah, and the... The, to tell you the truth, again, like if you're a guy with your your finger on the pulse, ear to the grindstone, you hang out with the gyms. Gyms don't lie. Gyms do not lie. So like, you know, you can go. I can go to a place like Tiger all the time and see top UFC guys in there. And then all of a sudden, there's some random kid from Dagestan that like doesn't fight. You know, this is just his hobby, and he's whooping ass. You know what I mean? So don't get it twisted. Yeah. Uh, but again, different eras and different things. You know what I mean? Like right now, I think Ali Akbari could be in the UFC heavyweight because, again, it's not as stacked and packed as it has been in some different eras of the company. You know what I mean? Um, I wish you. I, I think, wish. That being yeah. said, I think like Stipe would Stipe would put fucking Ali Akbari to sleep probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, don't get it twisted. I'm not. I'm not lying either. I, I think certain guys. You know, again, Eddie Alvarez coming over. For me, it's like, uh, give me one second. Sorry. Uh, for me, I think it's going to be a lot of fun because, like, a lot of people are saying that that, that he's going to hang with certain fighters. I think he's going to take them out. And and Asia, like one thing, uh, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, have you ever been to the Philippines? You you know a lot of Filipinos. I know a lot of Filipinos. I've never been to the Philippines though. Okay, do, do Filipinos like to wager? Yes. They do, right? <laughs> so if Eddie Alvarez is put in against Edward Foyalong, 
you and I are going to go to the Philippines for it because they'll put it in Manila, right? They would. Lions and Tigers and Bears. Live from Manila, Eddie Alvarez versus uh, Edward Foylong. You and I are going to go there, and I will bring $25,000 and put it all on Eddie Alvarez. Is is the Philippines, their, their gambling is open like that? It ain't open air like Lumpini Stadium. Okay. Uh, okay. But, you know, they have resorts, hotel, casinos. They have casinos. I mean, again, I, I've had I've had my 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 ups and downs with uh, addiction and all different things. And when I was younger, I used to to play quite a bit. Uh, during those during the the first Forrest Griffin days, when the Ultimate Fighter first came out, I was going to Vegas all the time, and I loved throwing it on fights. Um, fights are interesting though, man, because again, like. If you're a real fight fan, you can go and find lines on on a lot of different things, and the difference between actually technically gambling. I mean, maybe this isn't the proper thing to talk about on the website, but I don't. You know, I'm not I'm not really a proper guy, I guess. But like, uh, well, who is a proper guy? There's guys all over the internet talking about mm-hmm. fantasy picks, and you should pick this guy on this prop, yeah. and and what qualifies them to do all of that? You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. For- for sure. And, well, dude, what qualifies them is like there's some people that, again, like that, that are like like you and I analyze. I analyze a lot. So like, I, to go back to Conor McGregor, bro, um, a lot of people think I'm probably stupid. I put it on video for Eat, Pray, Fight. They're not going to put it on because it's Fox. There's going to be an adult version of the Eat, Pray, Fight that I did put it coming out on, the, on FMD. And I was with one of my boys, Chad Torben, and he and I are high school roommates, been friends for life. We go to every like Conor McGregor show now since we went to uh, uh, we went to Chad Mendez, and then after Chad Mendez, I've been to every Conor McGregor show. Uh, and at Floyd Mayweather, just to just to put it put it evenly, at Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor, there were so many Irish that really believed, just like the Filipinos will really believe in Edward Foylong, they really believed that Conor McGregor was going to win. Now I'm a guy that comes from an analyst point of view, and I was on Fox being like. Dude, you're, this is apples and oranges. This he's, he's broken the fourth wall. This isn't supposed to happen. We could just as well talk about Conor McGregor fighting Wolverine or Sly Stallone. It, it, it doesn't make sense. He's broken the fourth wall. There's no way that he's going to win this boxing match. People were all like, put your money where your mouth is. Put your, I went. I went to Mandalay Bay with Chad Torben, who put thousands of dollars on Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, sure. The line wasn't good, but you knew he was going to win. So it doesn't matter if five thousand dollars got you a thousand dollars back. You got it. You you knew that we knew that I was just going to collect thousands of dollars. That would be the same thing, probably, in my opinion. I mean, if they they're they're not going to make Khabib versus uh versus Mayweather, but never say never because things have things have happened. But Daniel Cormier even said, if he goes in there and gets popped, if he goes in there and he gets popped, um. Man, I'm a popular dude right now. Super popular. At random time, 10 in the morning, 10.30, people are trying to get in touch with me. Stop. It's Stop always good. Me. It's always good to be yeah. busy, you know. Um, busy you know, is better I, than I, being bored. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to get into that a little bit. Is um, A lot of people talk about, you know, uh, Joe Rogan. He, he does so many things and he's so busy and... He's just an incredible man, and then I yeah. and I look at a guy like you. You're everywhere. You're doing all these different shows. You're doing promotions. You're doing events, um, and I look at that and say, "Hey, if you're if you sit back and you're noticing someone being too busy, then you must be doing something wrong with your life." You can always work an event. You know what I mean? If people want to get into events coordinating, they can. They might not get paid for it. You might have to volunteer for a while. I volunteered for a very long time, and it, it rose me through the ranks and got me the networking capabilities that I was able to make money off of shows and turn. Dude, I'm, I think I'm like the most successful person in this game. I went from doing the mic at Patong Beach Stadium and small stadiums off the coast of Thailand as a farang. You know, when people talk about racism in the industry, this round eyes, these took it all. These took it all. It wasn't until I could sing the anthem that people actually started taking notice. And I think I'm one of the only people that sings another country's national anthem. So, I mean, to go from there to being working with Fox 
to being allowed to run my own promotion in an, for another company to having my own shows. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm a mother in this industry. I'm I mean I'm not Joe Rogan because they have a bigger bubble than we do. Oh. They have a way bigger bubble than we do. America has a bubble. Like when we were over there at the fights, they don't even know some of the things in Asia exist. You know. Mm. Yeah, some people I, think I, I, I live I, I, in North I, Korea. Hmm? Some people think I live in North Korea, you know. That's... Some people think I live in Taiwan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, Taiwan, you should go there. I'm like, ah, you got it wrong. You haven't been following me correctly. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, dude, again, we let's not get it twisted. We actually are the guys that like a niche of a niche sport. I mean, MMA is a niche sport, and then we're in the Asian MMA. What? We're the like niche of the Dungeons niche. And dragons and being like, you know, I only like dragons. I don't like the dungeons part of it. Going what? back to the uh, the November third show, the co-main yeah. event. Javier and uh, Daniel is the co-main event of this show. They will be. They, they will, will be. be because I and and that that's based solely on that. I think it's going to be like one of the fights of the night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we you know we play our card differently than everybody else in the industry. I play my cards like a DJ. I, I do peaks and valleys with, with my cards. If I think it's going to be a not the best fight in the world, I'll put it kind of in the middle. I'll do a big fight for fight number three each time. Uh, we're going to start off with the heavyweights for this, for this show. Uh, that dude Stan Ski is going to take on Asriel from uh, Malaysian Invasion. It will be amateur rule set, but believe you me, this is like Zangief versus E. Honda. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun right off the bat. Uh, on a heads up for you, like a breaking news, if you could cut a clip for me, yeah, because you could cut clips and stuff, yeah. If you want some breaking news, breaking news, Loma, Loma, look on me. Loma's on my card, and Loma's fighting a girl named Amp, the Pocket Rocket, who was on my second show. And uh, this is this is ninety nine percent happening, but I believe that it's happening. Like both the girls are ready to sign. It's actually just a question of the budget. But I've, I've heard rumor that the Diesel Diva and Peace Through Sports is going to get on board with a little women's Thailand mixed martial arts. With Loma having her fight in Invicta and being on track with George Hickman, as you know, and the Hickman brothers down at, uh, at Tiger Muay Thai, and Ant coming out of Ekerin and being part of Team Judo from, uh, from Thailand, this is by far the, like this, we might make it a women's Thailand title fight uh-huh. to push one of these girls further. Because uh, cause this is the best fight. This is the best female fight ever to happen in Thailand. By far. If you're just looking at, uh, at, at who the fighters are and the matchup. The matchmaking, as you know, is what we focus on. And these two girls. I think George Hickman believes that uh, Loma can go in there and, and kick like a beast and wrestle like a beast. But this other girl, Amp, is a beast. So mm, we'll see what happens. But it's, it's by far like... Ant was the girl in the jujitsu matches that happened here in Thailand in the mall. She she mauled Rika. She mauled Rika, and uh, and Rika's like the face of Thai MMA right now. You know what I mean? She is a the beautiful face of Thailand. She's doing everything right. I think she's like going to be starring in Lacan, which are like soap operas and stuff. Amazing. Dang, that uh, is incredible. It, incredible. But as you know, she's like a blue belt in Brazilian jujitsu. So we can't like 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 I wouldn't want. Rika to go to the UFC tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, well, we like, got to be would, real with I, it. I would feel like that would be dangerous. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not about hurting people. It, it, again, like, there's two ways of having it. Like, I, I know a lot of people right now in this industry that because they're fans of somebody, they they want to see them devour another human being. Um, I'm obviously a fan of Tiffany Teo. You know what I mean? Huge fan of Tiffany Teo. She fought on my card. She's great. She's going in there against Nicolini. I got friends that are that love Nicolini for her looks, because female, because guys are guys, and love her because of her BJJ prowess. You know what I mean? I don't think that that's a great matchup. Just me. You know what I mean? I think Tiffany Teo is in trouble. Uh, Tiffany might not like me saying that, but again, like, you know, I hope her whole camp is based around takedown defense and 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 watching for the rear naked choke. You know. Yeah, you're right. You're and that, completely and that's just right. Being realistic. Yeah. If if, if 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 she goes in and gets choking, choked out in the, in the first or second round, 
you and I can have another conversation about how I'm just a wizard, you know? But I'm not a wizard, bro. I just watch fights all the time, and you you can see things. Yeah, you can see what Nicolini has been doing. She's been wrecking, wrecking everybody that she has faced because of her ground game. And yeah. it's just so strong, man. It's, it's I don't know, it's, it's completely... You know, it's comparable to some other male fighters that are strong in their jiu-jitsu game, too. Mm -hmm. And she's just doing it at the female level. Um, yeah, bridging, sure. you know, connecting this to back to FMD, Little Frog is going to face uh, Christel, what, Christel? Crystal. Chris, Crystal, Crystal but... Choi. Mm -hmm. Is that, it, that's supposed to be part of some tournament that you're doing? Okay, so the tournament is still on. But we found out last night that Little Frog is off. Oh, okay. Yeah, Injury? Some breaking news as well. Yes. Um, Little Frog is doing great for herself in her career as an actress and, uh, and uh, a pundit. Mm -hmm. And she'll be working with us next year. Like, I'm very, very excited. Again, like, as I've told you, this show, this FME 6 show, 16 show is a, is a launch party. So we will be launching this tournament. Not, nobody knew, but... I'll, again, I'll, I have no problem telling because uh, you guys will all find out on November 3rd. But we're going to launch a uh, women's, like, basically eight of our, Art of Eight Limbs tournament between countries. Mm. So she wasn't even fighting on this card. She wasn't even fighting MMA. She was fighting, uh, she was going to fight Trinity rule set, mm. which was going to be a new Trinity rule set. So she was going to do uh, three two minute rounds, very fast fights, three two minute rounds. First round boxing, second round kickboxing, third round Muay Thai, or Kun Kamir. Are you with me on that? Mm. I'm trying to reach out to all the nations and bring them together through nationalism. The best way to hate somebody you've never met. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you know? So uh, so she was going to do that for us. Looked at, We're looking to have her in January or February because she got a, an offer that she couldn't refuse. And I didn't want to be like, I'm going to hold you to this contract. Mm. And make you learn less money for your family than if you go. So uh, we've given her all praises, and, and she should go off and do that. I think Full Metal Dojo is a four fighters by fighters organization. Mm -hmm. I, I look at it like uh, from from my point of view, I treat them, I treat it like it's college. You know, when I talk to the fighter, I, I'm the one doing everything. I'm the one at the medicals. I'm the one doing doing all that type of stuff. And after we get done with the uh, official weigh-ins in the morning, before the party weigh-ins in the evening or the shirts off if you will um i i take them all aside and like you know again do you guys want soccer kicks who wants it do you guys you know what do you want to fight under how do you want to fight under what do you want your rule set like if you don't want to uh, make all the weight we can do it at a catch weight um and again when i'm there after it's very easy for me to say hey listen you think that you're a draw i thought that i was a draw you're not a draw on my show or to any of, of my events coordinating business models unless you're selling tickets. Getting views doesn't really matter to my show. We're not at the same level as a one championship. We're not at the same level as these other guys. I've always been an underground. This is the first show that I'm doing that's actually live and covered by Fox. So kind of amazing. Well, bro, if my tickets are a thousand baht, thousand baht is like 30 bucks. And, you know, your pay is 30,000 baht. How many tickets do you have to sell to make you technically do your job? Just do the math. A lot. Sell 30 tickets, homie. Mm -hmm. You got to sell 30 tickets to, to make that 30,000 baht. It's, you know? So, and I'm realistic with them. You know, if you're not on, I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on Twitter because I don't want to be. And I don't care about them. People are like, you're doing it wrong every day, John. Yeah, I'm doing it wrong. Okay, come see me at my house. In Phuket, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not doing it wrong. I'm doing I'm doing a lot of things right. Um, don't say what I, you know, don't do as I say, say as I do type of thing too. Like nobody can follow anybody in this industry. You got to just crush and crush and make, knock down your own doors and, and do your own things. But for, uh, for us, we're still an events coordination show that makes money off of the actual event. That's why I'm like one of the best in the industry. That's why I'm like sticking around. Um, because my my sponsors see returns, like we're pro, you know, we're profitable, we're rocking it. So, holler at your boy, you know, um, it's very good for me. But 
part of that reason is again, I have a great partnership with Club Insanity. I make make stuff off of FMB. I make stuff off of tickets. I make stuff off of sponsorships. Uh, you know what I mean? And I always budget like a mother. Um, I'm not ripping fighters off. Do I want to pay them more? Of course I want to pay them more. I think every promoter wants to pay them more. But to tell you the truth, Full Metal Dojo, again, going back to like university or like college, pfft, I'll show you what your worth is. You're a fighter in the world and you want to know what your true worth is? Come come see what it is. You know what I mean? If you, if you come to me and you ask for $2,000, that's 60,000 baht. Can you sell 60 tickets to my event? If you're a fighter out there that can sell 60 tickets in Bangkok, Thailand, or bring a crew of 60 people from the Philippines, or bring a crew of, you know, if you were Conor McGregor, you could bring thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands. You, you feel me? Mm. Fighters need to recognize that we are in a day and age where you're not being treated like athletes. You're being treated as entertainers, and that's because you're a solo act. You know? So you got to act like a solo act. Yeah, think. yeah. It's, it, if you think of it as like an entertainment wise, and you're a you're a solo act, you kind of have to have your own little street team out there. You do promoting you, yeah. or you you're the street team. You got to be yeah. out there promoting yourself and uh, and for sure. Uh, That's why you're tickets. so important. That's why your show is so important. I mean, you're you're talking to fighters every day, and they need to have somebody else do it for them. They also need to not share their own stuff on Facebook, but have somebody else do it for them. You know what I mean? It's one thing if I'm tooting my own horn, but if somebody else is tooting my own horn for me, that goes a lot further, you know? Um, I definitely think it's why, like, a lot of the guys from New Zealand are doing so well. Kai Kara France, Israel Adesanya, Dan Hooker, um, Brad (coughs) Angry Riddell, you know? They've got Ash James behind them and the the team at Engage. They've got Tiger Muay Thai behind them and, and those guys. So it's not them that are, like, sharing their stuff. It's, like, you know, 30 teammates that are, that are sharing their stuff. And that's how people are, are jumping off in this industry right now. Because it's sad. It's sad. Like, again, like I used to be all about, I want to have the best people on my car, the best, but I can't afford the best people. I can afford the best matchups though. Mm. You know, like you, you've been to my shows. You might not know two of the Thai guys that are on there, but you've been to my show, mm. John, how good are the fights? The fights are legit. Mm. Definitely, you know definitely. Because I mean? yeah. because we do strong matchmaking, and you might not know who they are, but Re and I know who they are because we've been on the underground scene watching these dudes fight underneath bridges. You know what I mean? So now they're on our card, and we know what the fight's going to be like. And I know that a majority of the people that come to a Full Metal Dojo show do not even come for the people that are on the card. They come because it's a fucking rager. Hmm. You know what I mean? My parties are parties, bro. It's not a show. My show is. Not for kids. Yeah, not it's kids. definitely not for kids. It's an adult show for adults. It's made to feel like an 80s, 90s action movie like you talked about. I pay a lot of attention to the artwork and the art and the atmosphere of the show. And believe you me, man, I'm not going to have bad fights on my show because I'm going to make sure everybody gets a challenge so that they know why they're getting dressed in a fucking parking lot. I could have them in a room with Eric on. I choose not to because artistically I want them to feel like Jean-Claude Van Damme in fucking blood sport. You know what I mean? Again, it ain't a kid's show. Yeah. This ain't, uh, you know, there are different, again, different promotions, different strokes for different folks. My show is for men, you know? Uh, and the grown ladies. And that, and that yeah, and, and grown ladies <laughs> that are scantily clad, <laughs> you know, and, and possibly being ridden around by midgets. You know yes. what I mean? That, that might that might actually happen at my show. You know, um, and I'm gonna keep my show my show. But so next year you'll see me do another show. And again, I'm 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 teamed up with Fox, and we're launching a new show on November third. You'll know all about it. It is the Kumite show that you heard about. I mean, a year ago, we've gotten it all stationed out, going to four countries next year, starting in Myanmar, and that all that'll all get launched on November third. That show's not Full Metal Dojo. It, w- it will look nothing like Full Metal Dojo. It'll look like the Olympics. You know? It'll look like the ASEAN Games. I, I'm commissioned to do the uh, Suzuki Cup of Asian MMA. So we're round robbing the countries as the Suzuki Cup does in Southeast Asia for football. So 
Um, and again, dude, I'm, I'm doing an e-gaming uh, thing next year as well. So there will be e-gaming on this on this Halloween show as well. Peter Davis, one, trip, one championship superstar, all-around dreamy human being, Peter Davis, is going to take on uh, Nick Harris. Because you know that those two dudes are also professional gamers now, and they use their thumbs to fight. Well, they'll be fighting Tekken or Street Fighter 2 in the cage. You know? Um, that, too, will not look like Full Metal Dojo. Um, the, the funniest part about the whole industry for me, it, because especially of, of how I love getting into it, is, again, at least once a week in, in Bangkok, somebody will stop me and be like, you're the UFC guy. That's how you know we live in a bubble. Nothing to do with the UFC. Bubble. You're the UFC guy. <laughs> no, you saw me commenting on Fox Sports Asia about the UFC. I don't work for the UFC. I've never worked for the UFC. You know, I just happen to be a fanboy. No, uh, I'm not afraid to admit it, you know. Um, and I like certain dudes in there, and I like certain things. But I, you know, I stopped. I'm like Chael Sonnen almost. Like, I like, I like looking at the behind the scenes and being in the industry and the deals that are going on and all that stuff as well, you know. Um, jack of all trades for sure man yeah, yeah yeah it is fun times and you seem like you got a lot on your plate moving mm. forward eat eat pray fight you got eat pray fight you know i like those those are you know very interesting to watch very informative of what the fight scene is uh you know what type of fight scenes there are around the world around not around sure. the world but around the asia southeast and, asia in southeast yeah. asia in particular um hopefully you guys could come out here in the beginning of next year because since the ufc is about to have a show in korea so we are in february we are. so we are we, again e pray fight will kind of stick towards uh showing what the atmosphere is of the event of the fight mm -hmm. so we will still go to things under bridges and we will still go to let way fights with dave ledoux i'm doing that we just got the aok -okay on that like three days ago so mm -hmm. i'll be there in december you know what i mean but yeah, when the UFC comes starts moving out here more, yeah, I'll I'll be going to all of them. I think I'm going to Beijing. I'm going to IMAF. IMAF is the International Mixed Martial Arts Amateur Federation. They're doing their worlds in Bahrain, so I'm going to Bahrain to do an eat pray fight. Um, not only are we doing eat pray fights, there's more highlight zones coming. There's more fight news is coming. There's more live from Bangkok, which will actually resurge itself in uh, early 2019 as a bigger batter show where like, you know, I actually am talking with different people as well and doing interviews with Israel Adesanya, mm. people of that nature. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, things are good. I'm getting to produce a lot more, which is what I have always wanted. Again, like, uh, you know, different people in this industry describe them as, as different things, whether that's apples and oranges, apples and Samsungs. I have always said that I'm the Quentin Tarantino of Asian MMA. And I like to compare my things to movies or rock music. And that's how you can tell promotions and marketing. That's how you can tell branding. Um, I, love, I love all fights. I love all the organizations. There's just some that are Taylor Swift. And there are some that are, uh, there are, some that are Kanye West. And there are, <laughs> are, are some that are Metallica. And uh, I'm Metallica. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm Guns N' Roses. Yeah. So um, it's a lot of fun. Definitely, man. Uh, Kunlun, Kunlun, All Star Fight, Rora Singapore. Um, yeah, I've got my like my shows that I'm definitely gonna stick with and and, and keep them rock and rolling as well. Love what uh, the boxing scene down in, in Singapore. The Roar of Singapore show is uh, an amazing event, and and that dude talk about a promoter. Uh, I mean, again, whether you like him, hate him, uh, in the industry, that type of thing, it it doesn't matter. That dude went from doing his first show in like a Chinese ballroom in Singapore to doing this last one at the Marina Bay Sands in five shows. That's a go-getter. You know, kudos to you, Scott. Uh, my hat's off. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, again, different people are doing their different things. And yeah, I'm, I'm a busy dude, but I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the uh, Full Metal Dojo show. This one, I'm going to do IMAF. I'm going to keep doing like two or three Prey fights between those. Uh, I'm going to do Dave LaDuke's Letway show. I'm going to take Christmas off, go to spend time with my family and do Christmas, and that's going to be sweet. And then when I get back here in January, you guys are going to see a whole lot more ASEAN fights going on. Myanmar, Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, the Philippines. Uh, 2019, 2020, and 2021 are, like, very big for me. 
So. Yeah, man. Uh, incredible. <laughs> you know, if you want to know anything, of course, you could go to John Nutt on Facebook. He's always on there. He's always uploading you know what's happening in the scene so it's uh it's always good to talk to you john and uh good luck on your show man well you don't need no luck because every full metal dojo show is incredible yeah full metal dojo again like this will just by the way you'll 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 love it dude so this one is going to be live on we had the option to go linear digital for a lot of people that don't know that linear means actually on television screen digital means just on their facebook platform on their streaming Mm -hmm. and uh i can keep it kind of dirty and rated R if I keep it on their digital and I have to clean it up if I want to be on their linear. Well, again, it's not the major money-making source of my organization or my, or, or my business. So we're keeping it raw. Mm-hmm. I, I did not pick linear. We are, we are staying on digital are yeah, you with me. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I really do believe in the digital platform. I believe that the dance thing that just went happened with, uh, um, Sal Canelo, uh, digital and watching fights on your, on your phone, man, when we were just in Myanmar, they were like, Forty percent of the country doesn't have running water or power, but eighty percent of the f- country has smartphones. So they're all watching. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, I uh, this Full Metal Dojo show is going to kick off a new little era for me. Uh, and next year we'll keep them keep them raw and keep them on uh, on digital while other shows go to linear and again stay very red, white, and blue. Yay. What can you do? All right, well. It's good. It was good talking to you, John. And uh, yeah, sure. and uh, yeah, if you are in Bangkok in early November, go check out the show. Yes. Uh, I've been there. It's incredible. It's like no other show. I've been to many, many different types of promotions, many different types of shows. And this one, I'm not going to, just because you're on the, uh, talking to me, but I'm going to, you know, I've told you this, you know, outside of interviews that you have the best show. It's the most entertaining, entertaining show. If you are a real fight fan. And yeah. if you are a real fight fan, you don't really care about the name of the fighters. All you care about is two guys going there and they throw down and, you know, yeah. give a great performance. And that's yeah. what Full Metal Dojo does. They put in guys that are going to throw down and have fun. For sure. So, and For you sure. are right. You could you could hear them breathing. You're so close to the action. We're the only ones, I think, in the world right now that are allowing soccer kicks. And we're the only ones in the world that are allowing you to get cage side, actual cage side, feel the cage. If you go to a UFC and you have cage side tickets, you're actually 30 meters away. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you know, you know what I mean. Like, it's, you're not really cage side. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we we let we let them get right close. Uh, yeah, man. And again, appreciate everything that you do as well. And uh, I'll I'll try to come on after uh, after the show. And we'll we'll rap about stuff then. Uh, but yeah, if you can't make the show, make sure you check us out on the Fox Sports Asia and share that link interact with that link because we're going to really try to make this show uh, interactive for for the audience that's watching on the live stream. You will hear me during this show nine million times be like, ladies and gentlemen, if you could please help me out by sharing the link below and comment if you liked that last fight, Javier Trujillo's up next, that you're going to get a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> always so, fun. Always fun, man. Always a good time. <laughs>